everyone welcome today we're going to be reviewing the lymphatic system so most people know the lymphatic system to be part of the immune system and have immune functions however there are three main functions that the lymphatic system has the first one is it prevents edema by draining out excess fluids the second is it absorbs fats in your small intestines. And the third is immune function because it has a lot of white blood cells present that filter out pathogens. So we're gonna start with the first one, prevents edema by draining excess fluid. Now, first of all, the word edema means excess fluid buildup in your interstitial space. Okay, so excess fluid buildup in the interstitial space. So let's go ahead and look at this first. In order to understand how the lymphatic system picks up excess fluid from your interstitial spaces, you must first know how the blood capillaries work. So let me give you a quick refresher. So here is our hearts. Coming out of the heart is oxygen-rich and nutrient-rich blood. Remember, it comes down your arteriole and it ends up here in this capillary bed. Then blood leaves the capillary bed via your venule and it goes right back to your heart. Okay, so I'm going to draw some tissue cells here, okay? So this is a tissue cell. So the whole point of the capillary bed is for blood to drop off oxygen and nutrients to these tissues like that, okay? So it's going to drop off any good things like oxygen and nutrients, but also it's going to pick up any waste product and CO2. So I'm going to draw that in blue. So all of the oxygen and nutrients are going to come into the capillary and they're going to be dropped off to the tissues and any waste product and any CO2 is going to be picked up and taken back into the blood system, go up the venules and back into the heart. So you see the space in between the tissue cells? There's a lot of space in between them, right? This space is called your interstitial space. Okay, it's important because that's where the fluid builds up. So how does this fluid build up? Well, your blood capillaries actually leak some of the blood plasma into the interstitial space. Now they also pick up some of the plasma, however they leak way more than they pick up. So there's usually a little bit of excess of fluid build up in this interstitial spaces, okay? Now in comes the lymphatic system. Any excess fluid is going to drain into these lymphatic capillaries and eventually the lymphatic vessel. Okay, so here we took a small cut and we magnified it right here so you can see the lymph capillary up close and you can see the cells that make up the lymph capillaries. You have the interstitial space surrounding it and the tissue cells surrounding the lymph capillaries. So one important thing to remember about these capillaries is that they have these overlapping cells and these over overlapping cells create these spaces in between them. They open and close in response to pressure outside of the lymph capillary and inside of the lymph capillary. So any fluid is going to drain into these little flaps or through these little flaps like this. And that's how they enter into the capillary. One more thing I want to mention is that we started off with blood plasma, right? Plasma. And then that fluid leaked out of the blood vessels and it went into your interstitial space. So it became interstitial fluid. When that interstitial fluid got picked up by your lymph capillaries, it became lymph for short or lymphatic fluid. So let's go through this one more time. Your blood leaves your heart, it comes into your capillary bed, 
and some of the fluid or the plasma leaks out in the interstitial spaces where it becomes interstitial fluid. The interstitial fluid gets picked up by the lymph capillaries and it becomes lymphatic fluid. Then the lymphatic fluid travels to your larger lymphatic vessels, okay? So that's where we're gonna move on next to, your larger lymphatic vessels. So there is a big difference between lymph capillaries and lymph vessels, okay? Remember, lymph capillaries lead to lymph vessels. Now the lymph vessels are larger, but also one of the main differences is that they have these valves on the inside. These valves prevent backflow. So if you already know like the blood vessels, you know about uh, about backflow. So pretty much these valves keep the lymph fluid flowing in one direction and prevent it from going back the wrong direction. The second thing is that these cells on the blood vessels, they're contractile. So they make small rhythmic contractions that moves the, the, the lymph on the inside. So contracts. Capillaries do not have that ability to contract. Okay, so we know the difference between lymph capillaries and lymph vessels. Lymph capillaries have these sort of flaps on the exterior of their membrane, and it allows fluid to travel into the capillary. However, they do not have these valves on the inside that prevent backflow. Also, the lymph vessels are able to contract a little bit. Your lymph capillaries are not able to. So let's move on lymphatic vessel and move on to the next area where lymph fluid moves to. Lymphatic vessels lead to afferent lymphatic vessels. So afferent with an A. Afferent lymph vessel. Afferent lymph vessel is the entryway into lymph nodes. So this is your lymph node. This round thing is your lymph node. Okay, so afferent is the blood vessel leading into your lymph node. Now inside is your T cells, your B cells, and your macrophages. And these are part of your immune system, right? They're lymphocytes. So macrophages are immediately going to engulf any pathogens that it, that it comes by in the lymph node. And then T and B cells are going to multiply and they're gonna attack any kind of pathogen. So remember in my last video about the immune system, how I said the dendritic cells Remember the dendritic cells, they're found in the tissues and they're antigen presenting cells. Remember they come into the lymphatic system, they go to the lymph node and they take their little antigen and they show it or they present it to the T and B cells. If the T and B cells recognize the antigen displayed on the dendrite, then they will multiply and they will attack this specific pathogen. So you find TB macrophages in your lymph nodes and that's why it's part of the immune system. Okay, so exiting your lymph fluid, once it's been nice and filtered and clean in your lymph nodes, it exits the lymph node via your efferent lymph vessel. Efferent with an E. So I think E as an exit. Okay, E for exit. So A is going in and E is exiting. Lymphatic fluid will either end up in your right lymphatic duct or your thoracic duct. So your right lymphatic duct leads to your right subclavian vein, which empties out into your superior vena cava. Your thoracic duct leads to your left subclavian vein, and that empties out also into your superior vena cava. So I'm gonna show you a printout so that you can get a better idea of what this looks like in the body. So here's a better image because I'm not going to attempt to draw this, but here is your thoracic duct, okay? The thoracic duct goes up and it empties out into your left subclavian vein. Your left subclavian vein connects and empties out into your superior vena cava. 
And I also added the trunks right here, left jugular trunk, uh, left subclavian trunk, not because you need to know this. To be honest, if you're studying for the T's, you don't need to memorize this. I just put it there just in case you're kind of lost as to where those fit into this, okay? So that's your thoracic duct. Now your right lymphatic duct is going to drain into your right subclavian vein, and then it's going to go down into your superior vena cava. So I drew this person here, and I have shaded in in purple the right side of the head, chest, and arm. That's because the lymphatic fluid on this right side is going to drain into the right lymphatic duct. The lymphatic fluid in the rest of the body is going to drain into the thoracic duct. Okay, so majority of the right side of the body is going to drain into right lymphatic duct. The rest of the body on the left is going to drain into the thoracic duct. So let's take a look at this image I have again. Hopefully you guys are able to see the right lymphatic duct is highlighted in green. So it's actually this green tiny little tube right here. And that's the entrance also to the right subclavian vein. So it drains into there. On the left side of the body, you have your thoracic duct and it's going to drain into your left subclavian vein so the veins are in blue and the ducts are in green okay guys so we went over the two functions of the lymphatic system one is draining excess fluid from your interstitial space and the other is immune system functions remember we have those white blood cells that are found in the nodes that filter out any pathogens so let's move on to the third function of the lymphatic system which is absorbing fats this happens in your small intestines okay so picture this as your small intestines and let's just take a little tiny piece and magnify it so remember in your small intestines the intestinal wall is full of these little things called villi that increase surface area right these are your little villi so in each villi this is your villi pretty much magnified the lymphatic vessel that is found in between each villi is called your lacteal. Your lacteal absorbs fats. This lacteal goes to your lymphatic vessels. Okay, it, it, it leads to your lymphatic vessels. So we also have blood vessels surrounding our lacteal and normally nutrients are absorbed in the small intestines via these blood vessels, right? So nutrients usually pass the villi and they go into your blood vessels and into your blood. However, fat is insoluble in water. So this is what happens to fat. Here's a little fat right here. Okay, one right here. And they're, of course, exiting your gastric system, your small intestines. Okay, in order for it to be absorbed into this lacteal, it has to be packaged into this water-soluble packaging, okay? This orange right here is the water-soluble packaging. It's going to make it able to go through the lacteal. This is called your chylomicron. The chylomicron is a water-soluble packaging that packages the fat and pretty much makes it able to go through your lacteal. Okay. So basically, fat is absorbed through your lacteals. So after fat is absorbed by the lacteals, it goes into lymphatic vessels, and that eventually leads into your cisterna chyli. So cisterna Okay, so I haven't shown you where the cisterna chyli is, so let's go ahead and look back at this diagram. You'll see the cisterna chyli right here. And you'll see that it also leads up into the thoracic duct. Okay, that's important to know. Cisterna chyli 
empties out into the thoracic duct. So cisternic chyle holds chyle. Chyle is a milky fluid made of fat globules and lymph fluid. Alrighty guys, that pretty much wraps up the lymphatic system here, but I did leave out some very simple things that I, I feel like are very easy to find in a textbook or if you want to get my study guide, I'll leave it down below and it's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Um, some of those things are like where the major nodes are found in your body, you know, axillary, the cervical of course has the most nodes found. Don't forget to look into what the spleen does and what the thymus does. Thymus is super important because it's the place of T-cell maturation and of course, of course the bone marrow, the bone marrow produces white blood cells, um, pears, patches that you find in the gastric system. So all of those things are really easy, really self-explanatory. So don't forget to look them up in a textbook or you can find all that information in my study guide below. I'll leave the link. Okay, thanks for being here. Present the antigen to the TMB cells. Well, here they are. They're the TMB cells. Are